December 1956. Place, Vancouver, Canada's third largest city. Granville Street, with more neon lights per foot than any main street in Canada, is presently echoing the fun and hilarity of the Shriners' Friday night parade. All of the enjoyment and spectacle serving as a prelude to the second annual Shrine East-West All-Star football game. Empire Stadium, 1954, home of the British Empire Games. And today, the site of the final Canadian football game for 1956. According to the Weather Bureau, Vancouver received an annual precipitation of just under 59 inches. And on this particular day in December, the city is in luck. It's getting all of it today. The turf in Empire Stadium is probably the finest in Canada, and now that the tarpaulin is coming off, it'll receive the added benefit of a good soaking. You'll recall that the first All-Star game was played last year in Toronto under weather conditions somewhat similar, and wound up in a 6-6 tie. Then it was the Western running attack led by Edmonton's Jackie Parker against the Eastern passing offensive of Sam Echeverry and Tom Dublinsky. Today's game could well be a passing duel, since both quarterbacks can throw the ball. Frank Trapuca, the Saskatchewan Rough Rider who set new passing marks in the WIFU this year, will have some of the best receivers in the West in action. Players such as Lampman, Grant, and McNamara. The Eastern Signal Caller, Sam Echeverry of the Montreal Alouettes, will have teammate Hal Patterson, judged the most valuable player in the country for 1956, to receive his tosses. All proceeds of the game, of course, go to the Canadian Shriners hospitals across the land. And everybody here today is out to support the Shrine's good work with crippled children. All of this symbolized in the ceremonial kickoff at center field, where one of the many kiddies helped by the Shrine is having the time of his life. Strong legs will run so that weak legs may walk is the slogan of today's contest. And it has a lot of meaning, not only for thousands of fans here at Empire Stadium, but also for the Shrine Temples across Canada, the 52 All-Stars taking part in the play, and of course, the many children who are direct benefactors of the game. Here's the opening kickoff, Ken Carpenter. Taken deep in the Eastern Territory by Cookie Gilchrist after a brief fumble, run back to the 31-yard line, inundated by a wave of Western tacklers. On the first offensive play by the East, Echeverry's pitch out to Gilchrist is fumbled. Sam recovered, trapped by Dick Huffman, second and 15. Here's big buddy Tinsley, the West Coast captain, in fast and hitting the rifle's arm, recovering the fumble on the East 10, a big break for the West early in the ball game. Coach Jim Trimble of the East looks on, not too happy, a pitch out to McNamara. He goes down to the one-yard line. The end zone of snow and slush is beckoning as Norma Kwong cracks over into pay territory, the first score of the ball game. The China Clipper and the touchdown. Reggie Whitehouse practices for the conversion. Over the crossbar, through the uprights, and the West is in front, seven points to nothing. Carpenter again on the kickoff. Al Patterson from the East 18-yard line. He is down on the 35. Ted Tully, the principal tackler. Sam Echeverry, number 70, for the East back to pass, comes out of the pocket. He hits Al Patterson, number 30, for a short game, and Patterson is tackled by Lynn Bottom. East offside on that play, the penalty declines. Second down, eight to go. Echeverry back again. A short screen type pass to Patterson. Nice bit of broken field running by Hal, but he loses possession of the football. It's loose and finally recovered by Whitehouse for the West. An East infraction on the last play took the ball back. It is still second down and eight yards to go. Number 70, Echeverry back again. Throws a long one intended for Hal Patterson. Broken up. Kruger and Miles are there to knock it down. Third and still eight. Cam Fraser in that peculiar kick shift, dreamed up by Coach Trimble. The boot is a good one by Fraser. Downfield, taken by Gordy Rowland. 
Nice bit of sidestepping until he is jumped on from behind, and down he goes. First and ten for the West on the East 35-yard line. Quang on the pitch out, a nice cutback. Good blocking by Ruby and Whitehouse in front of him. Eddie Bevan made the stop. The game was eight yards. The pitch out is to Bye Bailey of the BC Lions. Fargo, Blacher, Calder, and Penny all in on the stop. First and ten, the West in possession, the East 22-yard line. And Jackie Parker, number 70, is nailed on the handoff from Frank Trapuca. Big defensive end, Doug McNichol, the man who did the job. Second and 16 yards to go. Carpenter in motion to the right. Trapuca fakes to Bailey and is back to throw. It is long. It is into the end zone and over the head of the intended receiver, Jackie Parker, number 70, in the dark jerseys of the West. Reggie Whitehouse field goal attempt goes wide of the upright. Taken by John Penney, and he slides out to the one yard line. The East in possession backed up right against their own goal line. That's a very on a quick pass to Patterson, and that limp is very evident as he goes down hard on the seven. Second down, about five to go. The pitch out is to Gilchrist being chased by Bottoms. And he's down, finally, on a pile-up on the one-yard line. Fraser moves back into the end zone to punt for the East. It's another good one, almost blocked, and over-the-shoulder catch by Lynn Bottoms, number 50 of the Western team. Here he comes back to about the 44-yard line. Trapuca back, drawing out in the flat, intended for Carpenter, got his fingers on it, Don Penny almost intercepted, but not quite in each case. Second and ten, Trapuca on the first base, of course, screen pass to Bob McNamara, and he just puts his head down and tries to pull his way down. He is finally piled up after a substantial gain, Moran and Vargo on the tackle. Trapuca throwing to Jackie Parker. Steve Artichuk is the man who grabbed him, but there was offensive holding called against the West, nullifying the game. Tremendous protection by the forward wall of the Western All-Stars enables Trapuca to fire that ball down. Parker is behind the last Eastern defender, grabs it into the end zone, second touchdown for the West. Number 70, great football player, Jackie Parker. Here's the conversion attempt, juggled momentarily by Trapuca, but Whitehouse makes it good, and the score is 14 to nothing. The minutes flag up to the end of the first quarter. Carpenter on the kickoff for the West. Don Penny from the East 21-yard line, running diagonally to the far sideline, finally goes down on the 26-yard line, the gun sounds ending the first quarter. The West, 14. The East, nothing. We're in the second quarter of play now. The West ball at midfield, first and 10. Puka is back to pass. He's being chased by number 36, Big Duck McNichol, who wouldn't let him get away. The loss on the play, 12 yards. It goes to Puka back again, this time the rush is put on him by Bevan and Newman of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. The ball is loose, and Newman recovers for the East. First and ten on the West 28-yard line. Sam Echeverry, the quarterback, number 70, going back. Good rush being put on him by one of the West hard charging linemen, and he is down for a loss. Second down. Sam throws, but it's knocked down by Red Whitehouse, who went diving through the air and sliding in the water. Razor back to boot again. Into the end zone, number 50 is Lynn Bottoms, trying to work his way out away from uh, three men, and a fourth has a shot at him, and finally gets away from two more until he is down on the three-yard line. Amazing run back by Bottoms. Carpenter is the ball carrier on the sweep around right end. Nifty bit of cut back there. And he is finally hauled down to earth. Honest Chuck is the principal man on the tackle, along with Don Penny. The gain is eight yards on the play. 
Tommy Kwong starts out left, cuts back sharply, brings the ball up to the 20 yard line. Kwong once again, that familiar number 64 in the western backfield. He drives for a good gain. They're working that fellow to death. He's a little boy, but he certainly can go. Normie Kwong, the China Clipper from the champion Edmonton Eskimos. To spell Kwong for just a moment, this is by Bailey of the BC Lions. The ball carrier into the right side of the line, short yardage. Very nice faking by Trapuca here, a handoff to Jackie Parker, who appears to be stopped, gets away amazingly, and down he goes until two Eastern tacklers make sure they've got him on the cold and wet ground. Pick up on that plate, 20 yards. Short pitch out to Normie Kwong is worth three yards on the play. Trying by Bailey on the right side of the line, he can't get any more. It is third down, about four yards to go. Larry Isbell, the left-footed booter of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Hoist one. Don Pinney picking it up on the three-yard line. Nice cut away from the first man and the second and the third as well. And finally, Parker came in from behind. Pinney fumbles out of bounds. And on the penalty, the East retains possession, but they go back 10 yards. Atchaberry rolling out the pass, can't get anywhere, can't find a receiver open. It's smothered for a loss at the seven yard line. Firing down the middle. It's completed to the 24 yard line. Tex Robinson, the receiver on that. Down the middle again. This one intended for Patterson. Tips and goes incomplete. Second down and still 10 to go. That is intended for Patterson, almost intercepted by Ted Tully, who isn't too happy about his near miss. So it's Cam Fraser booting again, and Lynn Bottoms on the receiving end at the 42-yard line. Nice reversal by Bottoms, he's still going, and pushed out of bounds at the 54. West ball, first and 10. Trapuca on a quick handoff to Normie Kwong, an opening in the left side of the line. Honest Chuck and Fargo make the stop for the East. Second down about three. Strong again. This time he picks up sufficient yardage into the right side of the line for a first down. Western forward wall offensively is giving quarterback Frank Trapuca tremendous protection today, and this is another great example of it. He's got all the time in the world to get that football into the air. It's headed for Jackie Parker, but it's a little slippery, a little too hot to handle. And that's Don Penny sliding home. A screen pass is completed to Bob McNamara. Fargo is the man who brought him down, and Norman came in just to make sure, and the East is called for piling on, and the referee steps off the penalty yardage. First and 10 on the East 29-yard line. Rebuka with one fake. Looks for Ken Carpenter, way down the left side in the vicinity of the east goal line. And that's Steve Onischuk defensing him beautifully and tipping the ball into the air. Number 42 is Tom Moran of the Montreal Alouettes for the Eastern All-Stars. He picks it out of the ozone. It's the east ball, first and 10 on the 10-yard line. Echeverry throwing to Dick Shadow. He is filled and filled hard and injured on the play. Roland and Bottoms, two defensive halfbacks for the Western All-Stars. And a great ball player, Dick Shadow of the Toronto Argonauts, leaves the game. First and 10, Sam looking and throwing far downfield. Broken up once again, the intended receiver, Hal Patterson. Etcheverry goes back and Reggie Whitehouse puts the nail on him. Back on the 25-yard line. It is third down, 10 yards to go. Cam Fraser kicks once again. Another over-the-shoulder catch by Lynn Bottom. Moving diagonally, cutting back. Down he goes, and there's uh, Roland right beside him who takes the lateral. And he is stopped in his tracks by Bucky Curtis. First and 10 for the West on their 40-yard line. Let's go, Come on, 
quarterback Frank Trapuca holds the ball on the final play of the first half. And the score at the end of the half is 14-0 in favor of the Western All-Stars. It's an amazing thing that in spite of the heavy rain, there is no evidence of mud on the players' uniforms at all. And this is quite a testimony to the turf of Empire Stadium. That same turf will get another workout right now with the special halftime program of marching and pageantry. And with the host temple for today's game, the Giza Temple of Vancouver, our representatives from other shrine temples, the Alazar Temple of Calgary, Wawa Temple from Regina, Khartoum Temple of Winnipeg, the Afifi Temple from Tacoma, Washington, and other Shriners from Edmonton and all across the land. And fortunately for the marchers and bandsmen, there are enough plastic rain capes to go around. A few rubbers may be missing before the second half begins, however. The Jeff Nicklin Memorial Trophy, awarded annually to the most valuable player in the WIFU, this year goes to Edmonton, Jackie Parker. The trophy presented to Parker by Jeff Nicklin, Jr., son of the former Winnipeg star. With the halftime ceremonies over and the Shriners having sampled the spongy field, the fans now settle back to see if the East can overcome that 14 to nothing deficit. Eastern coach Jim Trimble and his Western counterpart Pop Ivy with Jackie Parker watch Ken Carpenter on the kickoff to Don St. John of the Ottawa Rough Riders number 44. From the East 26, he is finally downed on the 35-yard line by Gordy Rowland. A handoff to Cookie Gilchrist and the pickup for the Eastern All-Stars is just two yards. Second and eight. Sam Echeverry, number 70, a screen pass to Gilchrist. He is tackled by Big Dick Huffman as Lynn Bottoms played leapfrog over him. Third down and Cam Fraser, number 54, coming on to the scene of football activity. He boots. And Lynn Bottoms, number 50, can't hold on to that slippery football. Rolly Miles finally recovers back to the 41, hit by Curtis and McNichol and knocked out of bounds. Rolly Miles, number 62. First and 10, the little prototype jump pass thrown by Trapuca to Lampman, good for 14 yards and a Western first down. Ball is on the 50-yard line. A pitch out to number 58, Bob McNamara. Nice running. Nice change of pace, and away he goes again. A great performance, and he is finally ridden down to the ground by the Toronto Argonaut, Bobby Kuntz. Here's Trapuca, setting his sights on Jackie Parker, and he picks up seven yards before Steve Onischuk applies the tackle right down around the ankles. A fast handoff to Normie Kwong. The boys have a look, and the officials waved in the yardstick. It is good for a first down on the East 22-yard line. Trapuca fakes beautifully to Normie Kwong, rolls out to the far side, and throws on the dead run. It's pass intended for Jackie Parker, almost intercepted by Montreal's Tommy Hugo. Second down, there goes Frank Trapuca back again. Big rush is on by Pete Newman, but amazingly enough, he gets the follow away to Bob McNamara, who is finally knocked down to earth by Oni Scott. Trapuca, a jump pass to Lampman once again. He carries to the eight-yard line. Cam Fraser made the stop. First down for the West, goal to go. Normie Kwong picks up four, and now Frank Trapuca hands off to Bye Bailey who oh, goes down at the one-yard line. That's Bailey of the BC Lions again. The hole is a little one, but it's big enough, and Bailey is into the end zone for a touchdown.
this White House and the conversion attempt, it is good. And the West leads the East by 21 points to nothing. Carpenter on the kickoff. Johnny Blacher of the Montreal Alouette brings it back. And down he goes on the 37-yard line. A change of players as the fourth quarter gets underway. Tony Casillo, the Hamilton Tiger Cat quarterback, is in calling signals for the Eastern All-Stars, number 60. He is back to throw. His pass intended for Robinson is incomplete. Little Normie Kwong, shivering and shaking on the sidelines. Map is momentarily lost, taken by Cookie Gilchrist. The ball squirted away, but covered by Kay Vaughn, the lineman of the year from the Ottawa Rough Riders. Razor's boot, taken by Gordy Rowland. He is down by Bevan and Albright. It is first and 10 on the West 46 yard line. The Buca fakes once. Still getting tremendous protection by the forward wall of the Western All Stars. And a great pass and a great catch by Lampman. Fargo and Blacher come up to make the stop on Harry. This pitch out is to number 64, Nomi Kwong. He knifes his way through the left side of the line. Finally hit by Steve Anachuk and Norman. But the gain by Mr. Kwong is good for 15 yards to the East 40. Rafuka trying a screen pass intended for Naomi Kwong, and Tommy Moran from Montreal knocks it down. The fake to Bailey and the pass down intended for Kenny Carpenter is incomplete. A field goal attempt by Reggie Whitehouse. It is wide of the upright, and it's fumbled in the end zone by Penny, and there's Bud Grant, the Winnipeg end. Coming in, recovering the loose football for another Western All-Star touchdown. Whitehouse on the conversion again, and his aim is perfect. The score is 28 to nothing, and the scrambles for football souvenirs of this Shrine East-West All-Star game continue as the lights come on at Empire Stadium, Vancouver. Dropping his kickoff is taken by Don Penny. Back to the 31-yard line. He is down there by Roland and Fieldgate. It is first and 10 on the East, 31. Pitch out is to Don St. John of the Rough Riders. Some nice sidestepping and some nice driving by St. John. He picks up 12 yards, Huffman and Kruger on the stop. That's a very handoff to Cookie Gilchrist there. Good for three yards to the 46-yard line. Cookie was caught by Fieldgate and Tully and shaken up on the play. Lots of encouragement being shouted out from the sidelines. That's a very back to throw intended for Patterson. It is incomplete. That was Ted Tully right on top of the play. Eastern trainer Pinky Lewis works with Cookie Gilchrist on the sidelines. Razor kicking. Taken by Gordy Rowland. And he is nailed by a nice shoestring tackle almost immediately by Moran and St. John at the West 31 yard line. First and 10. Buka passing completed to Ken Carpenter, number 34, down the far sideline. He took it from the 39 down to the 48-yard line. Honest Chuck made the stop there. Tommy Kong into the right side of the line. His gain is good for five yards. Second down, five to go. The Buka passing again, intended for by Bailey, and it is incomplete. Third down, five yards to go. Larry Isbell, the left-footed booter from Saskatchewan. It is taken by Don Penny at the 18-yard line, and he runs it back just four yards to the East 22. Popular Tommy Hugo of the Montreal Alouette just going in. That's 
great pitch up to Costello. Goes up to the 24-yard line. Tony from Hamilton now playing halfback and Sam at the quarterback spot. Green pass to Don St. John, number 44. He moves it up to the 36-yard line, puts his head down, and just strives for extra yardage. Bruxman and Kruger combined to stop him there. First and 10. Pass by Sam Etchbury down the middle, intended for Cam Fraser, is incomplete. Etchbury getting lots of protection this time. It's a long run down, intended for Bucky Curtis. It's no good. Cam Fraser is back in punt formation. He boosts and goes off the side of his foot and goes out of bounds pretty close to midfield. And there is the resultant expected scramble among the fans for that prize souvenir football. Now activities begin to resemble a soccer game with an oblong football on an icy pitch. And finally, some unidentified but fortunate spectator heads for the hills with a happy souvenir. The West in possession at the 54-yard line. Frank Kapuka still masterminding that uh, play. There's a long one. It's way down to Bud Grant and a great catch and a great peek on that man who was trying to get him. And for the second time, he cuts back into the end zone. Another Western touchdown. Reggie Whitehouse is good again. His fifth one this afternoon. And it is 35 to nothing for the West. Tony Castillo receives Carpenter's kickoff, brings it back to the 24-yard line. He fumbled one hit by Druxman, and by Bailey recovered for the Western All-Stars. The Puka forced way, way back by Scott and Albright. The ball is loose, but the whistle had blown to stop the play. Second down. The Puka running out, looks for receivers, spots Jackie Parker, and it's incomplete. Bell juggled the snap on the third down punt formation, barely got the ball away. Went through Bobby Kuntz. No yards called against the West, so it will be first and ten on the East 53 yard line. At the very quarterback, his lateral goes to Casillo. Tony doesn't want it, he gives it back to Sam. And Sam fires it, but it is incomplete. And there are markers down on the field of play. The game is over. And so with a background of rain and cold, the final score in this second annual Shrine East-West All-Star football game, the West 35, the East nothing. Today's contest, besides giving us some exciting football, has provided another step towards strengthening the weak leg for whom the strong legs ran this December 8th afternoon, 1956. <laughs>